You're watching Eyewitness News at 6 on WUTR. Welcome back to Eyewitness News at 6. A major bridge collapsed in Baltimore this morning when a ship crashed into it, plunging a construction crew and multiple cars into the water. Now President Biden and other leaders are jumping into the recovery efforts. Washington, D.C. correspondent Hannah Brandt explains what we know about the collapse and that response. Behind me, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, now in pieces and partly underwater. It used to be a busy, highly traveled bridge spanning about 1.6 miles before this ship crash sent it tumbling down. Our state is in shock. In the early hours of Tuesday morning, a shocking scene in Baltimore was caught on camera. Maryland Governor Wes Moore says this cargo ship lost power and sent out an emergency mayday call. Officials reacted quickly, getting on the radio. Port all traffic on the Key Bridge. Just moments later, the ship hit Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge. The whole bridge just collapsed. While the Mayday call gave officials a critical few moments to shut down traffic on the bridge, a construction crew filling potholes on the bridge was plunged into the water. First responders rescued two people. One is hospitalized, the other unhurt. But six more are missing. The search and rescue operation is our top priority. President Biden sent federal officials from the FBI, Transportation Department, and Army Corps of Engineers to help local leaders. We're going to work hand in hand with the support of Maryland to support Maryland and whatever they ask for. The bridge and the port are shut down for now, a devastating blow to travel and shipping in the region. But President Biden says he wants the federal government to cover the entire cost of rebuilding the bridge. The people of Baltimore can count on us, though, to stick with them at every step of the way until the port is reopened and the bridge is rebuilt. The president also says he does plan to visit Baltimore, but didn't share any specific details about his trip. In Baltimore, I'm Hannah Brandt. Fort Drum soldiers are returning home from a deployment in the Middle East, a scary mission at times as the unit faced conflict amid the ongoing war in Gaza. Northern New York reporter Isabella Colello has that report. What does our sign say? Welcome home, Welcome Dad. Dad. An intense nine months is over. Hundreds of Fort Drum soldiers are home from a deployment in the Middle East. The first deployment for many, an eye-opening experience. We're not the only people that live life. There's people across the planet with similar issues just trying to get by. A mission full of combat. The 10th Mountain Division's 2nd Brigade combat team deployed to Syria, Iraq, Kuwait, and Jordan late last summer, right before conflict began between Israel and Hamas. Ever since the, the war in Israel, we've been going to the bunkers, we get, we're getting rocket attacks. Um, so the, the previous unit, they didn't get as much. So uh, yeah, we, we've been running, <laughs> running to the bunkers every now and then. 10th Mountain Division. Apologies for that. Still to come tonight on Eyewitness News at 6, sports director Brennan Miller brings us all things in local athletics. What's going on tonight, Brennan? We're taking a look at Syracuse University and a name that you definitely know from that national championship men's basketball team getting some 